the squeeze on euro dollar it's not a big one but the market's been fading the le pen risk throughout much of the week just give me your thoughts so far on the fx open over in asia yeah, I think, you know, this victory was very well priced in. Uh, you saw that with the euro going up, but you, you saw that also in a quite a convincing uh, compression of the uh, OAT boon spread over the past two weeks. So the market was positioned for um, a Macron victory. I think the buyers near term remains to the upside. That said, it's probably quite limited on euro dollar because the euro already has overshot compared to the rate differential, uh, for example. Uh, positioning uh, uh, has, has changed quite a lot over the past few weeks. So I, I, I don't think it's going, to be very, it's going to go very high. We need to watch the U.S. data later this week, uh, U.S. CPI, U.S. retail sales. Uh, that will uh, say a lot probably about the, uh, the Fed. I'd be more confident in euro yen, for example. Yeah. I believe that we're seeing a number of tail risks disappearing. Uh, euro yen has some upside still. Yeah, that's the story we said of the market. The upside for euro yen much more pronounced in today's session. Talk to me about the bond open in the next 24 hours, Vince. The spread, Bund's AOTs on a 10-year on a basis, about 40 basis points. Last year, we were tied as 20. Can we test those kind of 20 basis point levels? Is there any more juice left to squeeze out of that spread? Again, I, I don't want to fight this, tr this trend right now. Uh, the bias is for a tighter spread. I don't think we go to 20, at least not before the uh, general election in June. Um, I, I, you know, before, the, uh, uh, before we started to see some, some stress on that spread, say in September last year, we're trading around 30, 35 basis points. We might go there, but I think, again, the, the room there is quite limited until at least we get more clarity about the general election and about what type of majority uh, Mr. Macron can, can enjoy. That will tell a lot, uh, you know, about implementation, whether he can deliver on the uh, policy plan. Yeah, Vince, I'm concluding from what you've said already that it's too early to really fade the re-denomination risk in Europe. And I want you to assign some odds for me, the odds that we will be talking about this story all over again in the next 12 months, but not through the prism of France, rather in Italian. And we'll be doing that very, very shortly. Do you anticipate it happening all over again, that we're going to have a rerun of the same conversations? Well, I would say the uh, political risk in Italy is uh, larger than it, than it was ever uh, uh, in France. So, yeah, we'll talk about that. But, you know, presumably we don't get that election in Italy before spring next year. Uh, that's quite a long time. That's quite a long window. The ECB will be moving before that. So I don't expect that to be... Uh, an immediate focus. Uh, I do expect BTPs to lag in this uh, spread compression move that we're seeing in Europe, but I don't expect that to be a major uh, focus in the near term. And also remember the elections this year, yeah. Netherlands, France, uh, you know, people were concerned, but eventually we didn't get that nasty surprise. And that's quite a big change from what we had last year in the US or in, in the UK. Uh, I would say we do have, as you said before, quite a strong momentum right now in the European economy. And usually uh, this is not an environment that is very conducive for uh, anti-establishment parties.